Hi, Maxime here. So today for this bite source, I'm here and I'm hosting like uh, Danilo DiLeo from Linet, uh, Un, no, sorry, Lineun Universitet. And he's going to talk uh, about us, to talk to us about the Metat de Novo pipeline. So I'm really looking forward to that because I have like very little knowledge about this field and I think it's going to be super interesting. So over to you, Danny. Hello. All right. Uh, thank you, Maxime. Uh, so I'm sharing the screen. Can you see it? All good. OK, perfect. So yeah, the, thanks for uh, hosting me. And um, this is like a, a pipeline that we developed, and then it's called Meta T de Novo. And uh, the idea is to, uh, to work to make uh, like a best practice for like uh, uh, assembly and annotation of uh, meta transcriptomic and metagenomic data. So we will go a bit through like uh, what is a Denova assembly and a bit of background. Then I will describe the uh, pipeline, go through like a test case that uh, we developed while we were writing uh, the manuscript, and we will see some future improvements that we thought we, it would be nice also to have in the pipeline. So why we chose to work on this pipeline? Um, as all know, probably, or everyone knows, probably, um, metatranscriptomic and metagenomic uh, projects are increasing over the years. You can see like in this graph, like uh, from 2005 uh, to today, like a lot of papers are having like the metatranscriptomic involved in the, in the project and the more they will come probably in the future because uh, uh, this kind of like uh, method is becoming cheap and uh, and then it's really useful for uh, many reasons mainly when you work with the uh, with community uh, and environment data um, so out there there are many tools uh, that you can use to address like your uh, um, uh, to address um, um, to address um, your 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 projects uh, when you work with metatranscriptomic or metagenomic, but uh, there is not really standardization. That's where like uh, uh, we end up by thinking that it would be nice like to collaborate also with the NF core and creating like a, a workflow that is reliable and then it can be used actually for doing such uh, sort of analysis. May Really, the, the idea is to uh, get uh, a gene catalog and then annotate that with three and functionally. So, because of this lack of pi uh, pipeline, we decided to, to go for it. Um, if you don't have a refer reference genomes, then the best solution is to build your own gene catalog. Um, so to build a gene catalog, uh, uh, you, you need to um, prepare your reads from your samples, so your transcriptomics or uh, metagenomics reads. Uh, you clean them, you, you prepare them, and then by using like some tools, like in this case I'm uh, I'm showing mega hit, you can create this reference. Uh, these are group of contigs uh, that are in a in a single file, and these contigs can be used uh, to realign. Uh, the reads uh, that uh, came directly from the samples. So the advantage of using this method is that uh, you are not uh, um, you are building um, a gene uh, contexts that are directly from the whole community composition. So each reads can represent a fragment of a, a group of organism, and by using the the, uh, the assembly tool, you can build. Uh, these long sequences that you can use to retrieve what is actually then uh, the the gene, and the genes can be used to do several things like assign taxonomy and function. So uh, uh, if I want to get inside the pipeline and trying to describe it, uh, we have different uh, stages. Like the first is the pre-processing stages. So in stage we start with uh, uh, clean the reads and check the quality of them. Then we use like a, a program that is called BBDAC. So with BBDAC, we want to remove all the contaminants. And the user can decide to uh, give its uh, faster sequences that for him is are, or her are the contaminants. But uh, we provide uh, Silva, which is a, uh, used mainly for removing uh, 
it is mainly for remo removing uh, the air RNAs, which are like sometimes, or mo in most of the case, like the, the contaminant factors that you don't want to work with. Because when you work uh, with metatraskitomic, for instance, you want to work mainly with the genes, uh, or those genes that are actually uh, can be functional annotated and taxonomically annotated. Then, like we pro uh, pro proceed with the uh, interleaved sequences uh, when they are, for instance, pair ends. And you can decide whether you need or not to normalize the reads before getting to the assembly. The reason why uh, we added this tool is, is because when you work with the huge amount of data, let's say that you have like 30, 40, 60 samples and even more, uh, normalize the, the reads before as uh, making an assembly. It will give you a better assembly in terms of quality, longer contigs uh, and easier to find like ORF on it. That is mainly because you can have like some uh, uh, some organism that they express much more uh, genes uh, and then those genes as a matter of histomic they can be sequenced more than others so they can mask some uh, fewer um, uh, concentration of other reads so by using maybe norm you can address this issue but uh, uh, in our case when we work with the uh, with the metastasketomic data, if you work with a, a smaller project, so maybe 10, 10 samples or like 20 samples, it's still okay to not use it, but it's good to have it there when you're working with huge data. So then it comes to the assembly, we provide two different tools. Um, the main idea of having two different tools, because it, it depends a lot also the type of uh, uh, performance that you want to address. Mega heat uh, is generally faster and uses less computed uh, resources, while RNA space uh, it can be a bit more um, um, challenging for, for, the, for, the, for the servers, but uh, it can give you also a better uh, result in terms of assembly. So it depends also on your resources, then you can decide whether you use one or the other. Uh, for us, it looks like they uh, RNA space mega heat can provide similar outputs, but uh, of course, when you work with your data, you know your environment, you might uh, want to, to give a, a try with one of the two tools. So it's in a way, it's good to have them there. And generally, it's the same when it comes to uh, the ORF color. So when you get the assembly with the contigs, you want to extract the genes and to create uh, this gene catalog that we can use then to annotate it. And uh, um, we have three different uh, programs that we provide. And the idea is that uh, PROCA is really uh, good for uh, prokaryotic uh, datasets, um, but uh, it has uh, a lot of filter step, filtering steps. So um, it's, re it's really good uh, in, um, in giving you a really nice output in terms of genes, but it might be that uh, it can be a bit stringent. So some like, uh, uh, smaller ORFs uh, or rare ORFs can be uh, filtered out from PROCA. So uh, if you are working with projects that you might want also um, look at uh, smaller or um, smaller ORFs, maybe it's good to use Prodigal, which is uh, also uh, good for prokaryotes. If you are working with eukaryotes, uh, we, uh, we suggest to use transdecoder instead. But anyway, the output that you get from these three tools uh, uh, are the same. So you get a GFF file and a, a, an amino acid, se amino acid sequence that are the actually the ORFs that we can use downstream. With the GFF file and with BBMAP, we can uh, map back uh, the, uh, to the ORFs, to the, to the contigs, and then uh, retrieve it to the ORFs, the, um, the, the reads, and, and so we can count them in the end with the feature counts. We also provide a tool that collects all the feature counts from each read or from each samples. And we build uh, and we build like a table that can be used uh, directly uh, as output uh, from, uh, from the pipeline. So for the annotation step, we use uh, uh, the gene catalog that we built before with those three, one of those three tools. And we have a bunch of uh, functional annotation. The reason why we have some is because you might want to address in different ways. And also for us, when we work with our project, we might sometimes work with the HMR 
profiles so we address a specific group of genes and we want only to address them but also you can uh, work with eggnog so you can get uh, um, uh, a list of uh, uh, different uh, co-categories or maybe KO terms and so on so you can use directly uh, eggnog map and as well as like if you use Proca, you get another type of annotation and then you get also one other with KU uh, When it comes to taxonomy, we decided to use ukulele. Ukulele is a tool that was um, developed um, by a, a, lab, a lab group and they started to work mainly with eukaryotes, but we found that it's actually really good also for prokaryotes. What one of the advantages of using ukulele is that you can give uh, uh, several um, da databases uh, in the same run. So the way that is working inside, inside the pipeline is that uh, you might have um, the uh, um, default um, database that you want to use to annotate your uh, your genes, or you want to use your custom your customized um, data database. Um, with ukulele, you can run several times in the same run. So, for instance, uh, I'm working with the prokaryotes and I have my own uh, data set. I can give my own data set and at the same time give you also the GTTB data set. So, by doing that, I can uh, um, I can get two different annotations and I can use the different annotation to uh, merge the results and get like a better resolution of my output. But uh, for our experience so far, if we work with prokaryotes, um, GTDB is still the best to use, so we are quite happy with that, and I think that is the way to go. And we also provide this information in our documentation. Uh, in the end, like um, as uh, all NF core pipelines, we provide a multi QC uh, output with uh, several of these modules inside uh, the multi QC. There is also um, an output from translate that it gives you like the statistic from the assembly, which is always good to, to look at it and maybe use it when you write your manuscript. And we get also the collected statistics, which is also a really a good table because it gives you the amount of reads that actually map, map it back to the, uh, to the contigs, uh, to the ORF, at, at ORF level, and also for the different um, annotation that uh, were done. So this is actually like uh, maybe our best um, uh, outcome from the pipeline because uh, at the end of, of it, you might want to only focus on one folder that is called summary tables, where you have all these uh, um, tables that uh, I was uh, trying to explain to you. So accounts table for the TPM, a functional annotation, a taxonomic annotation, and all these uh, tables can be merged together when you work, for instance, in R or Python. And then you can just start to build your own graph and, and doing uh, your own further analysis. So for instance, this is like a test case that we uh, we are using also for our manuscript. And directly from the statistic table, we can see like the difference when we start with the treatment reads and then when we remove all the contaminants. And then we can see like from the non contaminated reads, the, uh, how many reads actually map it back and the one that we get uh, with feature counts. If it look, we look, for instance, in the taxonomy here, like we are making also a comparison with the original paper that we we wanted to test, and we can see that actually uh, in our case we did quite good job with this uh, with this data set because uh, uh, we have like in the original paper two groups that are this uh, uh, pseudo on Jacelase and Altermontase, and in the original paper they couldn't assign anything to the um, Alternal Monadase, while with our uh, WGTB database and ukulele, we could assign them directly to the to a uh, family level, which uh, which gives you like a, a better like um, uh, resolution of the of the output. Um, we, we this is like for the functional notation, for instance. I was just plotting like uh, the output from the code category, and I just um, um, order them by decreasing order, like uh, from the tra uh, translation and all the other functions. Uh, 
when then you uh, you where you can use actually the pipeline then like uh, if you want to build like graphical representation like the one that I showed before we, you can also use it for doing depth analysis of the gene diversity for instance we work a lot with uh, some group of genes so for us using HMR um, program is really good because then we can uh, further use them for build like our trees and and check the diversity inside the, the gene catalog and it can also be used if you do like control experiment for gene expression uh, analysis there are some improvements that we we are thinking about and what we would like to to do in the future uh, we uh, saw that sometimes um, even with uh, uh, if silva database for removing the rna is quite good sometimes we still add have some so maybe adding an, another filtering step you can address this issue but also like there are other tools that can be interesting to to look at it like a uh, kraken or we uh, were thinking also to have a more specific application for instance in instance removing the host associated um, re, um, sequences from uh, the microbiomes and for instance like we found like sequences that we could use you know, for the gut then as the increasing of uh, the using of long reads um, is uh, it seems to be increasing through the time like we would like also to have uh, an input that allows you to use the long reads and having maybe a, a new function annotation tool which is uh, actually really useful especially when you work with the cadzymes because it is this uh, run db can and we also saw that it could be interesting to integrate other pipelines that are already present for instance this differential abundance might be uh, good to integrate inside the pipeline but we are still thinking about it and maybe adding like other features like a uh, field of placement for whoever is working with specific group of genes um, we are actually now developing another pipeline and the idea is to get a complementary one for uh, the Metati de Novo. So when you work uh, with, uh, without a reference genomes, it's always good to start from a de novo assembly. But in the case that you are working with uh, uh, genomes that you already have, or might you, because you decide to uh, download from uh, different sources, you might want to ma map against those ma uh, genomes. So then we are building this uh, new pipeline uh, is still under development and we are we are planning also to get new feature and news about this in the next hackathon so stay, stay tuned for this um yeah so that's it and i will thank like uh, the university the nf core people for uh, um being like a uh, part um be part of this uh, project uh, the sbdi that is the swedish biodiversity data set that is actually um uh, helping us with the with the project and of course like uh, daniel and emily that also contribute to the pipeline and the uh, help channel in slack because that was useful actually thank you uh, thank you so much uh, no that was like super good and super helpful so no no thank you very much about all that uh, yeah, so you mentioned that you were uh, looking into like uh, creating like a new like uh, pipeline, like a new component pipeline. So the mm -hmm. MagMap. Uh, I'm guessing also you seem to be like quite uh, interesting in all of the with all of the, the other like taxonomy like pipelines. So I'm guessing tax profiler and uh, mag and the other stuff. So I'm guessing you do share a lot of components with each other and you do you are a tight community, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like uh, we made several like NF core modules also for the time that are used. Uh, actually, they are they use it. Uh, in NF core community and also like uh, while building this uh, mag map uh, we found actually useful to find modules that are present also um, in the in NF core modules yeah, so it's actually no, uh, yes no that makes sense I'm guessing you're uh, like now that you have module maybe you will start off like making like sub workflows that you so that you can share that in between like uh, more component and stuff like that 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, as, as well. Like we already have had some like sub, sub workflow that might be also su suitable for uh, like uh, NF core and and I um, I think that is uh, like for instance when we were thinking about uh, um, adding like um, other um, and and of course like pipelines to to the one that we are developing they we might we could maybe uh, add them as like sub workflow to the main workflow for instance so there are a lot of different combinations that can one can do, can do with that so okay no, no. very good very good also you mentioned the differential abundance pipeline yes yes exactly it was uh, yeah I, we we saw that is actually it seems actually really interesting and, and useful even like for this uh, for this project in Metatida now, because uh, in the end, what we get as output, we can think that it is similar what you can get uh, out from an RNA-seq pipeline in the end, because RNA-seq is starting from a reference genome, for instance, while we are building our genome from scratch, and then we do like uh, uh, the taxonomy and everything. But uh, then the output, it, it, it can be actually used um, I'm not sure that it will work straight away. I think that there will be some like adjustment in the output from MetaDNA for the way that it is now, but it, it can address that if one needed. Like uh, we are, we are still thinking about it because of course doing like a differential expression uh, analysis it can be something that you want to do when you work with specific projects. For instance. Uh, if I think about myself, I work a lot with the environment. So then when you work with the environmental data, you usually don't have like a control, um, um, a treatment and control because uh, in the environment, you you just uh, fish out what, what you get from, uh, by using like a, a triplicates, for instance. So you, you repeat the analysis, but uh, if you uh, work with a controlled environment, so you make maybe a mesocosm experiment or you work in the lab, then might might be useful to use it. But so it depends a lot of of your project. No, no, looks super interesting. Thank you very much. Uh, is there any question from like uh, the audience? Feel please like don't hesitate and feel free to unmute yourself. Uh, yes, actually, I have some questions. Mm -hmm. So first of all, those are two very interesting pipelines, especially the second one, I think fits more like what I want to do. So but I will ask you some questions regarding the de novo assembler. So you mentioned mm -hmm. for the mega heat and the RN speeds, so the performance are similar. Uh, but do you have like any experiences of these two assemblers on the virus de novo? Mm -hmm. Uh, which one is better? Because I saw the space they have different uh, assemblers, for instance, yeah. like the one mm -hmm. you mentioned, RNA, RNA viral, or meta viral. Do you have suggestions for the yeah. RNA virus? Yeah, so, <laughs> so um, first of all, I would say that if you have virus reads, you can actually uh, input them in MetaTDNO because the, the RNA space has this option that you can just mm -hmm. uh, use it as a, for uh, viral RNAs. So, in that case, if you work with a bit with biomes, what is something that I didn't mention because I was mainly talking about prokaryotes and eukaryotes, but I I didn't focus on on virus. But you can also I think that if you work with the, with virus, I would really recommend to use uh, RNA space. Um, RNA space. That, yes, that is the way to go. I think, and I know also so, that mm -hmm. yeah, in a, in a, in our department I know that people had really nice experience with their not base. So for, have you tried uh, how do you see they have other uh, algorithms for instance the RNA viral and the meta viral in space do you think these two will outperform with against the RNA space for the virus? Uh -huh. I can I cannot say it because I didn't try it personally so I cannot address that question but uh, I I would guess that uh, using like uh, the, uh, the the actual tool for um, um, for vir virums it would be much better so like uh, in that case like uh, arena space is really like uh, um, I would say flexible so you can you can ask to use like mm. the option for the virus so then you can just run it through yeah. it
I could perhaps add a little bit there. If there is an assembly program that we want to use for viruses, for instance, we would be, just let us know and we could try to integrate that also with the pipeline. Yeah, absolutely. Like, uh, um, is if there is any tools out there that is might be better, it can be worth it to add it. And also, I have another question. Maybe I I don't know. Maybe I'm, yeah, it's a very basic question. It's like, so do you actually? Is it how do you say? Is it is it possible to include this, uh, for instance? Uh, uh, principal component plots because you already have the the feature counts. Is it possible mm -hmm. to include that in the pipeline? You know, it's easy just to get the, so yeah, we don't yeah. have to use the other tools to actually mm -hmm. do the yeah. Yeah, absolutely. As long as you have the 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 counts there and like a, there is this uh, table, the the count table, it can be used directly to build PCAs. I mean. And those are like uh, one of the f first thing that we do, right? With when we uh, we work with the <laughs> metatask atomic data, so it can be something that can it can be added without uh, issues. I think it was not on top of our mind, to be honest, because uh, I feel that um, our main ad um, I feel that we wanted to address uh, the main like point of, of these pipelines, so getting the function and taxonomy. But uh, as long as now with it's out every suggestion and improvement. Uh, that that is the way to go. I mean it's not an end process, no? You always can add more features. The, 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 for a PCA to be useful one would also have to include some sort of metadata. At least mm -hmm. some kind of grouping variable. So you could perhaps color uh, samples belonging together or so because a black and white uh, PCA is not so interesting. Um, mm -hmm. For the time being, we have chosen not to include that type of um, analysis so much, the sort of this project specific statistical analysis in the pipeline, and instead focused on making the output tables very easy to pull up in other tools. So that's sort of the the our way of thinking so far. But we're happy, as Danilo said, to discuss anything. Oh yeah, thank you. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much for like uh, such a great presentation. Uh, I think that was yeah. like uh, super interesting. Definitely, it was for me. And uh, yes, I learned a lot today. Uh, so yes, thank you very much. I think I will stop recording for now.